Hello and welcome to the third episode of Coterie College. My name is Roosh and I am your professor. Today we are going to be talking about the last segment of anatomy. First we did the arms, next we did the legs, and now we got the torso. With everything that I've been teaching you guys lately, I follow three steps. So first we learn the skeleton, then we do the muscles, and finally we test ourselves. This is the method that I've been doing my entire life. I kind of just came upon it as I just studied and figured this worked the best. Nobody really taught me this, it's just it came naturally and I figured it's a great way to learn. If you guys are interested in being able to draw how I draw, draw the anatomy like how I do, you want to do cool action scenes, you want to do your own comic book, well then I'm the guy to help you out. We gotta start with the first step. Step one, the skeleton. Let's get started with the skeleton of the torso, which is gonna be the ribs. The ribs are kind of complicated, but we do it in a way that will make it simple, all right? So, so what I have here is the most simplified form of the ribs. You wanna start off by getting the general shape right. You don't wanna just start doing each rib one at a time because you will have trouble that way. I'm gonna start off really simple, right? You know, you don't need to rush into it. Got the, the manubrium, this is the whole body, the sternum, and then you got the xiphoid process. I'm not trying to be too accurate right now, right? So I'm just trying to get the basic shape down. You want to keep in mind that the torso is generally going to stay in one shape, more or less. Then down here, there's five lumbars, 12 thoracic, and then up here that connects your neck, you got seven cervicals. One, two, three, five, five, six, seven. That's seven right there. And then once you got that down, we do it from the side, right? That's how we always do it. Front, back, and side, so let's do the side. Another five lumbars down there. Okay. From the back, we just need the spine. I spent two days drawing ribs just for the Patreon. I'll put it up right now. It takes a long time to get ribs looking right. So right now, I've had enough ribs. I just want to get the shape down because that's what I struggled with. I'm like, all right, 12. I need to keep counting 12 there. But I would do it and I would it would just look weird, right? So because it would be like either too long or too short. You gotta focus on the, the shape, the overall shape. I'm teaching you guys how to draw legs, how to draw arms, but don't just put in muscles on top of muscles and just think of it like that. It's, instead, draw the overall shape first. Get the silhouette looking nice, because at the end of the day, we're just, we're artists, right? We wanna make things to look nice. So, you gotta really focus on the overall shape first, right? And then we can work on the smaller details inside. We got the front, we got the side, we got the back. Now, using another color marker, I'm gonna do something here. So, right here we're gonna put in the clavicles. The clavicles, we talked about this in the arm lesson. All right, we got the clavicles, and the clavicles meet with this little funny thing coming out of the scapula called the chromium process. The chromium process, think of it as where you have crows landing, right? Crows come and land here. There we go, all right? Now, we don't want you crow. Out of here. And then on the side of the, the scapula, it's a little socket, and that's where your arm goes into. It's like a ball and socket joint. From this angle, that's all you'll see. And then the scapula behind it goes down. Easy peasy. All right, then we do it from the side. All right, so that's from the, the side view. And then the back view, I'm gonna cut out so I don't put myself with the ink. All right, so we got the shape of the scapula, we got the spine of the scapula, glenoid process, right here, the chromium process, right? Boop, boop. When I first got into college, I was pretty good, you know, I was a, a good student, but I really didn't understand anatomy that well. For me, it was just a bunch of shapes, and I didn't really know what things were, right? 
because I didn't put the time into understanding the name of the muscles, the name of the bones, the purpose, how they change when you move. But once I got into school and it got drilled into me, like if you really want to take this seriously and you want to be a great manga artist, comic artist, animator, you name it, you got to learn all of this, right? This is the this is what people think of the boring stuff, but actually it is it's so fulfilling. Once you understand this, let's say you have a you're, you have a client who needs something from you really quick, boom, done. Right? Like you can finish an entire page with like 20 people in like two hours. People would look at you like, how the hell do you know how to do this stuff? And it's like, I put the time into it. I went to Coder College. I learned some shit and now it's all good. We know where the scapula goes on the body. What did we do last time with the legs? We learned about the pelvis. And that's why we learned about the pelvis because you don't want to overload yourself with information in one day, right? You want to break things up into easy to digest pieces. If you're trying to do all of this, everything that I've been teaching you in these three lessons in one sitting, your brain's gonna get fried. You're gonna learn a couple things, but then you do need a rest, right? You know when you work out, you don't get stronger when you work out. You get stronger when you sleep and your, your muscles are finally being put back together. Same with learning how to draw. The moments that you really learn are the times that you're in bed, you know, your eyes are finally closing and all this information is starting to process and you're thinking like, oh yeah, this and that. So there's this piece here called the sacrum. It, it looks like a bunch of vertebrates from the spine fused together. And then at the bottom, there's this thing called the coccyx and that's your tailbone. So we got the pelvis from the front, then we do it from the side. All right, from the back. So we got the rib cage, the clavicles, the scapula, the pelvis, the sacrum, on all three. We're doing it so we can remember it, so you can make a 3D model of it in your head. When you know how to draw the front, the side, and the back, you have an easier time drawing something from three quarters, from top down, any of that. They say practice makes perfect, right? That's not all that true, right? You can be practicing just doodling away and using your own imagination to constantly draw. But art is based off reality, right? You want to be able to manifest reality in your own interpretation, in your own style. So you need to master reality first before you can start making it surreal. When you learn how to do this stuff, then you can start making this whole world of creatures and, and designs and characters. All right, so we move on to the legs here. Right? And the legs, they come in at this kind of angle, right? So males will have this kind of angle. Females, like uh, female femurs, they have more uh, dramatic angle than the males. Femur, patella, which is your knee bone. It's good for hitting stuff like car doors, windows. So then once it gets to your femur, it has this angle, and then once you're to your tibia and fibula, it straightens out again, right? So we got the leg here. We'll move into the hand and the feet after this. For now, we're just gonna focus on getting these out. From the side view, your femur has this nice little swoop to it, right? It's not fully straight. From the front, it's got this nice curvature going on. Boom, noise, noise, noise. The fibula, I said this in the previous lesson, lower than the tibia, right? Your ankle bone on the outside is lower, just a smidge, than the ankle bone on the inside. Remember that, all right? Next, we move on to the funniest bone in the body, the humerus. So sometimes you, you know when people pop their arm out of their socket, you gotta push it back in. You're trying to get it back into that socket. You're trying to meet up with your scapula. Magnified. The radius at the top, connected to your, your elbow, is shaped like a little wheel, all right? At the very top, and it comes down, and it extends again. And then your ulna here, it starts off big. It starts to slender down as it goes up. The fact that it's shaped like a wheel is to help it rotate, right? That's, that's the only purpose it's there for. There we go. Knees look kind of weak on this one, but you know, everyone's built a little different, right? Next up, 
we move on to the hand and the feet. There are eight little bones in the hand. I don't know, I'm just gonna scribble them right here. There's eight of them, that's eight. One, two, three, four, four, eight. And then you got your metacarpals for the hands. These are carpals. You know when people get carpal tunnel syndrome? You're getting crap going on with your hand. Wherever the ulna is, that means the thumb is on the opposite side. And eight bones right there. All right, you guys might be thinking, who the hell is this guy? If it's your first time seeing me, it's like this guy doesn't put any effort into his drawings. That's true, I don't. But only for YouTube videos, I don't. Whereas for my comic and everything else, I put my life and soul into it. Just getting the overall shape right is hard enough. But for now, we got the hands, right? And then we get to the feet. So with the hands, there's so many names, there's eight of them. But for the feet, I have a better understanding. I put more time into it. Also, because I broke both my feet. I broke all my cuneiforms. I'll show you what the cuneiforms are. So this is the talus. And then we got the navicular, we got the cuboid, and then there's cuneiforms, three cuneiforms. So my foot, I broke it in half like that. I'm surprised it wasn't dangling really, but might as well have been. I just didn't know because of the swelling. General shape of the foot is this. This is from top view or bottom view, however you want to look at it. From the back, you got this big old bone called the calcaneus. I've also fractured that one from another incident, but I just didn't even go to the hospital for that. Right, I like this one. I think the proportions of this one are good. So now we're gonna erase this like we always do. We say bye bye to the bodies, you know, those headless bodies. Bye bye, headless bodies. We understand the shape of the ribs. We know that the clavicle goes around and meets with the humerus, and the humerus comes back and meets with the scapula. Your, pe your pecs are kind of going this way. Like they're, they're starting from your armpit and they stretch out this way. And where they latch onto is on the top of the clavicle. You gotta make sure you leave a little space here. It's like a little cut up. Because right over here at the top is your deltoids. Your deltoids are your anterior, your posterior, and your medial. And then you got your rectus abdominis, which is your abdominal muscles. So the serratus stems from here, and it's, it's like a crisscross of muscles meeting up with each other, right, right there. And it stems from the latissimus dorsi, which is your lats. And then underneath the serratus is called your external obliques, parallel to where that is, is where your obliques are, right here. AKA love handles on most people. You see this shape here? Look at this shape right here. That looks so creepy. It's just muscles and then no legs and just pelvis, right? So that shape right there comes from your pelvis. So let's get rid of that. And then up here, there's this little crevice. You don't want anyone to stick a finger in there because it probably hurt real bad. Where your sternocleidomastoid, uh, AKA the longest name you can have for a muscle comes from. Um, there's a set of muscles here. Uh, one of them is called the scalene, because um, it's probably shaped like a triangle. And then, stemming from your back, you'll see what is known as your traps, the trapezius muscles. We're gonna do a skull after, trust me. All right. And then when you do it from the back, so we'll start with the trapezius, the spine of the scapula, very important to remember. The spine of the scapula kind of runs diagonally right, like that, spine of the scapula there, here and here. That is where the traps and the, the delts meet and are separated. So the traps come back, come down here, boom, and they meet up like so, and they kind of clump up, like there's like, it almost looks like two separate muscles, but it's just one, because your traps will come down and they form this diamond shape right here, the back, at the top here, you got seven cervicals that are your neck. And the, the very bottom one, the seventh one, you can kind of feel it, right? If you look at it, it's, it's 
when you feel it right here, right here, and that's your seventh cervical, and your, your traps kind of go around it. When I said that it looks like two separate shapes, right? This is still your traps. At the back, your delt, you know how it does here on your, on your chest, they kind of come in and they overlap the chest. Same on your back. Your posterior delts will come overlap right there. Come in, they make, they make themselves real cozy on your back. Remember the shapes, right? Everything is a shape. Like yeah, as long as you know how the shape looks like, uh, what the angle is and all that, you're gonna have an easy time remembering this stuff. Here is your triceps. So you got your short head of the tricep, your long head right there, and your medial head. So just remember that because your, your, your tricep will take up some real estate on your back. And then there's your infraspinatus, which is the top piece right here. The teres major, which is this, the piece on the bottom. So like, look at it, it's like two triangles, right? And when you look at a bodybuilder, you mostly just see these two. There's a smaller muscle here called the rhomboid right here. A tiny little right here, little pie. That's teres minor. And then you come have it back here and it splits off right here. This is how we saw here. See it from the front, your latissimus dorsi, which is your lats. Underneath your back, you'll feel two columns of muscles on either side of your spine. And these are the erector spinae. So they basically, they're the muscles that you work out when you do like a deadlift or something. And then from this side, you can see the obliques, which are this, they wrap around the body. From the front, you'll see the sternocleidomastoid, and that's it. Not much to it, really. So we can go review it. You got the pecs, the rectus abdominis, the serratus, obliques, the lats, sternocleidomastoid, trapezius. You see, it's not that much, really, right? That's, that's not much. You can probably learn this in a day. You can learn this in the same day, You're learning these two. Obviously, the problem is keeping it all in, right? For instance, the, the back. I struggle with the back a lot because I'd always have to go back and go, what am I not getting in there, right? I keep, I kept messing up the shape of this, right? I, sometimes I draw it in the, the opposite direction and then I'd be like, what, what am I doing wrong? Never do this, right? It might seem like, hey, that could work, right? Or like, that works, right? Boom, boom. Right? That's the shape of a skull for the most part. You don't want to go so far into making a skeleton then you can just, better than doing this shape, trying to put it on the head because that's not how it works, right? Okay. You need a spine, you need the skull to sit on the spine. That's the only way it would work, all right? So, you know what I said? The three steps to getting it down. You learn the skeleton, you learn the muscles, and then you test yourself. I have a specific test that I handed out on Patreon, but it kind of goes like this, and we choose it an action pose, right? I expect you guys to have reference when doing this, but for now I'm just gonna go just off the zone. I can't allow someone like you to wear it. In college, for the end of the first semester, our life drawing teacher made us do this ridiculous test, or at least it seemed ridiculous at the time. Basically, it was what I'm teaching you guys. We learned all the names of the skeleton. We learned, you know, how, how to draw the skeleton. We didn't really go into the muscles yet, but the final year project was not only to make a booklet describing every single bone in detail, and then once you handed that in, you had a three hour sit down test where you have to draw the skeleton, front, back, and side view in some sort of dramatic setting, right? And you have to tell a story with that, but then, once you get that out of the way, you're like, I'm a brand new creature when it comes to drawing, right? So this is kind of the test they have. If you want to check out the Patreon, you'll see what it, I did some things a little differently there, but kind of following the same uh, format. skeleton first right so you can just see the model as what it is right truly understand what you're looking at and then over the skeleton or as the case I'm going to do now beside the skeleton depends if you're if you guys are studying traditionally probably gonna have to do what I'm doing if you're doing it digitally then you can just draw on top of it on another layer so I want to draw that again but with the muscles in mind now 
I have no attachment to the name Batosai the Manslayer. Just the same, I can't allow someone like you to wear it. We can see the, uh, the arm is kind of rotating as it's going, so we're going to see the triceps here too. Sick. Kind of get the idea of what I'm trying to say, right? Pull up a reference image, draw that reference image like you're Superman, right? You're seeing the x-ray, you see what's underneath, and then once you got what's underneath, go and put the muscles on top, right? And see if you can match it up. If you see how I do it on Patreon, I, I do what you call an écorché drawing. I don't even know if I'm saying it right. But you show the striations of the muscle, you show which direction they're moving and all that. All right, if you guys have been following along through episodes one, two, and three, then you guys are on your way to being pros. The goal with this Coterie College is to make you guys exceptional artists. Like, I want you guys to be killing it, all right? This year, you're scrubs, or even better right now, you, I'm sorry if I called you scrubs and you're not actually scrubs, but this year, you're, you're beginners, and next year, you guys are gonna be intermediate, and the year following, you're gonna be advanced, right? And it's just the amount of time you put in. I hope you guys enjoyed this. This was the final installment of Anatomy for now. Uh, in the future installments, future episodes, we're gonna be talking about some other things such as how to work on your style. Mm -hmm. But for now, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed these past three classes. There are a lot of work to do. <laughs> um, more work for you guys if you guys are taking this seriously. But if you have any questions, please feel free to ask down below in the comment section. If you guys wanna talk to me on Patreon, please hit me up. Um, or join the Discord, I'm almost always there. If you guys wanna discuss something or you have questions, you know, we can get on a deeper personal level right there on Discord. So, thank you for everything. I hope you guys enjoy. Hit up my Patreon, send some hugs and kisses my way, and I'll... And I'll see you guys very soon. So, peace, take it easy guys.